Wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Ooh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Better give that back to you. I don't want to lose it. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, we've had church up in here. Yeah. Boy, I'm telling you. Give Tyler a good hand this morning. Yeah. Woo! Good job, Tyler. Praise the Lord. Look at these pretty babies. My goodness. That's a testimony right there. Yes, it is. Wow. Yeah. My whole family, we didn't do this. I know. This is God. Yes, it is. Oh, it, God. Yes, it is. It's wonderful. Yes. Well, you know, um, I'm, uh, Jackie, did you uh, did you already tell them about your Bible study? Well, you need to get a mic. I want you to tell it out there because there's men out there that uh, want to come, and this is a men's only uh, Bible study, and uh, 
We're having a men's Bible study, starting a men's Bible study. At request, people have been asking about it. And it's going to be this Tuesday, August 31st at 6.30 here at Lighthouse Church here in Benton. And we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit in this thing. But the guide that I've got so far is that we're going to start with the basics of Christianity, God's answer for the world. And we've already seen a demonstration of it here this morning. This man getting born again here. Yes. Being drawn in by the Spirit of God. Yes. And, and being born again right here. So we're expecting good and big things in that men's Bible study. Amen. Tuesday, 630, Lighthouse Church, Benton. Amen. All denominations, Anybody. all race, all color, all creed, come as you are. That's right. If you can fog a mirror, then you're a candidate <laughs> to be here. Amen. There it is. <laughs> I hear that kind of stuff all the time. I've never heard in my life. All right, swords in the air. This is my Bible. It's God's holy word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught the word of the living God. Faith will come because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, don't you love the Word of God? All right. What does it say on the, on the screen? S stay alert. Stay alert. And there's, some, uh, there's about, uh, let's see, five different areas I'm going to give you this morning. So those of you that take notes, be sure and get your pen and pad out. And um, <clears throat> I looked up in, uh, well, I looked in two places. I, I wrote Webster. I looked in the original writing, too. But uh, alert said, uh, vigilantly attentive, watchful, watchful, uh, a warning signal. You know, um, they teach, especially women with children, that when you are leaving out of a store shopping, and this day and time, it's all men and women. But when you leave out of a store shopping, to always be aware of your surroundings. When you get ready to, uh, to go get in your vehicle, uh, you know, to, to uh, make sure you, you, you are very well aware of, of is there a, a van there a, a, that's uh, got two or three men hanging out around it for no reason. You know, you, you make yourself alert and aware. If you see something that has the, the vision of danger, then you want to quickly, quickly uh, get someone to walk with you or whatever you need to do in this day and time. And that is being alert. Now, if you're uh, slumbering, if you're not paying attention, then you're, you're an open target in the natural realm. But we want to talk about not being an open target in the spiritual realm today. So we're going we're gonna to dig in. We're going to get our feet, feet wet today in this. And our first scripture uh, actually, let's see, did I give you Judges, Shell? I, I wasn't sure if I was going to give you Judges for you to go there because I'm, I'm not going to read a lot. I'm just going to talk about it. But uh, <clears throat> in Judges uh, chapter 7, and that's a good book for you to read this week if you uh, want to study. But this is about Gideon. And, um, and so uh, Gideon was about to fight a, 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 a huge battle. And there were, uh, in fact, his team had uh, thousands uh, to, to go into battle. And, and so God spoke to him and he said, no, you got too many people. He said, because, uh, you, you know, I know, you, does he know how we think and how we act? He said, I know you. I know Israel. I know you're going to be saying, oh, we did all this. And so you need to get rid of them. And so the story is that, that he started narrowing down and giving him reasons uh, first, he said, those of you who are afraid, go home. And about 20, I think it was like, 20, I don't know how many thousand, anyway, thousands went home. And so it kept narrowing down and got them down to 300 men. And, uh, and the Lord uh, said, well, uh, 
the ones who, who lap the water, uh, that's the ones you can keep when they get a drink out of the brook. And, uh, and so anyway, it, he had 300 men to go into battle. And there were so many. Uh, in fact, I'll read you verse 12. Uh, verse seven, I mean, chapter 7, verse 12 says, And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number as the sand by the seaside for multitude. Now, you know, you could pick up a handful of sand and there'd be thousands of of little grains in your sand. So by this description, we know that God narrowed down our fighting ability, but did not narrow down the other side's ability. Is that right? And so when uh, this, and you know, the Lord just wants us to know that in the battles that we fight and that we have come up against us, the enemy will want to tell you, well, it's just you. Look at you. You're all by yourself in this. And the enemy will want to say, well, there's only 300 of you and there are thousands of thousands of thousands that's coming against you. And so, um, so many times in the book where we read story after story, we could look at the Hebrew children. There were thousands of thousands of people who bowed their knee that day. There were only three of them. When Daniel was told, you know, when they said, well, you know, we're going to make a decree that you can't pray to any other God. Daniel was by himself. He didn't even have a church group that met with him and said, hey, we're going to hold on to you. No, he, he was there by himself. But God fought for him. So there is nothing that man can do to you that God cannot get you out of it. If you don't get anything else out of this message today, you need to understand that the less that's in battle, the greater that your God will show himself. So now then, Gideon had 300 men. It narrowed down to 300. And he still had some questions. You know, uh, God had been talking to him. And, uh, and for God to talk to you, and I'm going to say this, uh, you know, I've, I've said this for many years, and I'm going to keep saying it. You need to be very careful to say God said. You need to be very careful. Because I'm telling you that we all are going to stand before this great God of the universe. This great God. And we're going to give an account for every word that we say. And I don't want to, the, the one fear that I have. I don't, I'm not afraid of man, and I don't know if, well, I'm, I don't like snakes, but, I don't, you know, I don't like snakes, but, and spiders, I don't like spiders, but I'm not afraid, you know, I don't live a fearful life, but there is one fear of reverence that I have, and that is the day that I'm going to stand in front of God, God the creator of everything, the stars that hang in the sky, the waters that rages in the deep, the the mountains, this great creative God, I'm going to stand before him. And I don't want my records to say God said that I, I said, God said, and he didn't say that. Right. To me, that's a very fearful thing. And so Gideon, I believe, had that same reverence of God. Because he, even though God would say to him, Gideon, you can do this and you do that. But yet he gave him a little window there. Now, if you still feel afraid to go down, do this. Well, I'm telling you, God will cover you. Do you hear me? He'll cover you right where you're at. And then, uh, and so uh, then, um, okay, in verse 12, it says, um, that, the, that they had the multitude of them was against us. And then skip down and look at verse 22. And so Gideon did exactly what God told him to do. 
And uh, there was a man that dreamed a dream. And uh, so the other man said, oh, I know what this dream is. Gideon's just listening. He didn't, you know, in fact, it didn't even name the guy. And it said, uh, uh, the, the man said, oh, I know what this is. This is God because Gideon's, uh, Gideon's going to win this battle. And Gideon knew when he heard the dream that he was to go down. And so I'm telling you that God will make provision for you. He will always make provision for you. And did Gideon have to go fight? Yes, they did go down. He didn't get to stay home, watch TV, and hope that it all turned out all right. He, ha he had to suit up to go to battle to let God fight for him. Amen. Okay, and then verse 22 says, And the 300 blew the trumpets, because there were three things uh, there were three things that he told him. He said, take a trumpet and a pitcher and a lamp. And so that's exactly what he did to go fight a battle against thousands of thousands like the grains of sand on the seaside. Can you imagine 300 men looking at that many and all they've got? <laughs> they don't have a weapon. All they've got, I mean, how ridiculous I mean, I'm talking about how ridiculous this looks. That here, here they've got a trumpet. They're blowing a trumpet. And they're, they've got a water pitcher that they're going to break it. And they've got a, lamp, a little lamp that they're holding. And so, they're, you know, it's like, this is crazy. But I'm here to tell you, when God's in it, you will win every time. Oh, I'm telling you, it don't matter how crazy it looks or how it feels, you know, and I, you know, I'm so thankful that Jackie's going to start this Bible study because, you know, I've had a boot behind him here for a minute because, uh, you know, I don't cut anybody any slack. Y'all know how I am. But, you know, we got a war to win and we've got battles to fight. We've got victories to obtain. And so we don't have time to fool around. But. But, you know, if Jackie looked at it in the natural, this is the most ridiculous thing there is to start a Bible study in the middle of pandemic. You know, we can't, you know, our churches are barren and they're being closed. But I'm telling you, when God's in it, boy, you better look out and get ready and suit it up to watch the miraculous begin to move. Amen. Amen. Whoa, I'm excited. Aren't you excited? You need to tell everybody you know, boy, you better come out. Better come out and get ready to, to saddle up and get on this thing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, so it said that, uh, oh, verse 22, and the 300 blew the trumpets, and the Lord set, and the Lord, and the Lord did this, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow. Even throughout all the host, and the host fled to Beth Shittah in Zareth, and to the border of Abel Meholah, and unto Tabith. Well, so what he's saying is that three hundred men put hundreds of thousands of men on the run. But I'm telling you today, that is what the Spirit of the Lord does for us when the enemy comes against us. First of all, you're not in your battle alone. If God has to call somebody on a Wednesday night service to say, pray right now, that's exactly what's going to happen. Do you hear me? If God sees ahead of time that somebody's going to need supernatural to supersede the natural, he's going to have somebody to pray it. If God sees ahead of time, see, I'm talking about a living God. I'm not talking about some God of religion. I'm talking about the living God of this whole universe verse that is all about you and I. He's all about you being victorious. He's all about you coming up above and not beneath. He's all about you having more than enough. That's what he's about. So today, Gideon had to be alert. He had to be on, he had to be, uh, uh, if you will, his ears tuned toward hearing what God would say for, for his battle to be a winning battle. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so now then we're going we're gonna to scoop forward. So we're going to say that in battle, to win a battle, we've got to be alert. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Okay, so now we're going to move down to Matthew. Turn to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, and I've got a couple of verses there. So my second one, number two, is in prayer. 26, 
Verse 40. Matthew 26, verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples, talking about Jesus, and he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and saith unto Peter. Isn't that funny how he always singled out Peter? What could you not watch with me one hour? Just one hour. Now, first of all, let me back up a minute. Jesus is fixing to go give his life. I mean, he's, he's reached the end of his, uh, his destiny. But these men, these, these disciples left all they had and followed him. So this wasn't because they didn't love him. They loved him. And they followed him. And they did mighty wonderful works through his name. They experienced him. They experienced him. But when it got down to the last hour, he said, and he comes to the disciples and finds them asleep. They're asleep. And all be before he had asked them, he said, just wait, Terry, right here. I'll, I, I've got to go pray. But they couldn't even. Wouldn't you think that they would have just prayed too? Where they were at. And he said unto Peter, What, what? Could you not watch with me just one hour? Say one hour. One hour. One hour. But look at verse 41. Jesus is teaching us something. He's not just talking to 12 men here, He's teaching us something. He says to us, Watch and pray. That you enter not into temptation. Now, was the devil there tempting? No. That wasn't what was going on. But Jesus is teaching us to watch and be alert that we don't enter into temptation. The, oh, here we go. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, so now what's he saying to us today? He's not talking about fighting the devil because, see, he's already given us authority and dominion over the powers of darkness. So see, he's, he's not talking about trying to pray for three weeks and, and trying to find God. He's not talking about fasting, although fasting's good for you. You know why? You know, so I've, I, you know in the old days, people would say, oh, I'm fasting so my daughter will get saved. Well, that ain't going to save your daughter. But we didn't know that, you know. We were fasting for stuff. Remember that? Well, what are you fasting for? I've got to get a new car. I'm going to fast. But fasting is to bring your flesh subject to the spirit man. That's what fasting does. I tell you when, you, when you think about fasting, think about going, you're so hungry, that's the day you're starving. There's other days you could go all day long and eat, eat hardly nothing and you'd be fine. But the moment that you make your mind up, you're going to bring your body subject to your spirit. Man, I'm telling you, you could eat out the side of the house. Y'all know what I'm talking about? That's because that your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. It is weak. And so, you know what? When you're, listen, Jesus is telling us something here, though. You got to understand that he's been with, he's, he's already, records have been made, and he's been with them now for three and a half years. But he says to them, watch and pray. So how am I going to get my flesh to, to stay subject to my spirit? He just told us. What is it? Watch. watch. And what? Pray. Watch. And pray. What am I going to be watching for? What am I going to be looking for? I got to watch over what my actions are. So when I look, when the thought of prayer comes and I think, oh, look here, I got to go get my grass mowed. Come on. You know, we do that kind of stuff because the decision, it wasn't, listen, and you need to understand this. It's not because you don't love Jesus. 
I believe every person in this house and listening on live stream loves Jesus or you wouldn't be listening on live stream and you wouldn't have come out on a Sunday morning where you could have kicked back and propped your feet up and stayed in your jammies. He knew they loved him. When he got on to him so ever so gently, can you not watch with me one hour? Can you not watch with me one hour? But he didn't stay on that. He moved quickly and said, you need to watch and pray. But I got to watch over what my body is doing, my flesh man. Yes. Oh boy, this, is this good? So good. Long time work. But the flesh is... And when you start trying to figure out and think that your flesh is going to get saved, you've deceived yourself. Because your flesh is not going to be saved until the coming of the Lord. It'll be transformed. It will be changed just like Jesus. But until then, we got to watch and we got to pray and we got to stay alert of what's actually going on. Amen? Amen. Okay, next one is spiritual combat. And that's Ephesians. Turn to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Verse 16 through 18. Ephesians 6, verse 16 through 18. Above all, taking, taking, The shield of faith, wherewith you, you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, are we going to have stuff shot at us and come against us by the wicked? Uh, Yes, we are. Yes. So just get settled down in that. Stop getting upset and, you know, get your big girl clothes on and, and your big boy clothes on. And just get it settled that the wicked is going to come against you. How's it going to come against you? If you believe in healing, guess what's going to come against you? If you believe in deliverance, guess what's going to come against you? If you believe in prosperity, guess what's going to come against you? The devil didn't go on vacation. He's not at home eating a box of chocolates and watching TV. He's coming against you to take your faith. Listen, if there's anything I can get across to you today, that Satan does not care how much you possess and own in this earth. Now, I can prove that. Because most of the drug dealers that deal in the big stuff, they live in, they live in uh, mansions. And they, have, uh, they own five, ten cars. They own, they have billions of dollars flow through their hands. So the devil doesn't care what you have, but he cares if you have faith. And your faith is what he will come after. Okay. Are we getting this? Okay. So he's telling us above all, th- above all, because we just, in, in the, the previous script, uh, verses here, he's describing of how to suit up and how to win. But in verse 16, it said, above all, above all of that, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And so when the wicked is coming against, okay, yes, okay. So when the wicked is coming against you, I'm going to use sickness. I'll use that for an example because everybody's experienced that a time, sometime in their life. Amen. Yeah. Okay, so then here you are. Sickness has come against you, uh, and, uh, and it says, I'm just going to do what it says here. It says to take my shield of faith. And so my faith is what will block the enemy from taking from me my health. So, but, but how's my faith going to do that? By using the Word of God. And so here I am. My shield is my belief in the word of God. Say that out loud. My shield is my belief in the word of God. So here the sickness comes against me. Now I'm going to get my faith, my shield of what I believe in the word of God. So instead of coming in agreement with what, what's coming against me, don't deny it's not coming against you. Because you know there is some belief out there, you know, that they say, oh, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. They got 103 fever and coughing their head off. And you know what I say? Yeah, you are sick. 
<laughs> you are sick, but it don't have a right to stay there. Right. See, there's your difference. Amen. Amen. And so, okay, so now I'm going to get my shield up, which is what I believe in the word. Now, for me, mine is Isaiah 53, 4, and 5. That's my shield. That when something starts coming against me, that I grab my shield of what I believe, and I get it up here and I say, I thank you, Father, that upon yourself, Lord Jesus, you took every sickness and every disease that covers everything that can ever come against me, and with your stripes, I'm healed. And I just want to praise you for that, and therefore, therefore, these fiery darts is coming against me. This thing that, that Satan's bringing against me cannot, it cannot prosper, it cannot prosper. I'm prospering, and I win. You know, Jackie can vouch for me. There's been times that I would say, I just need to say this out loud, I win. Because when I'm battling something in my body, you know what? Don't be keeping it to yourself. Get them words out in the air because Satan is the prince of the air. Get it in the air, I win. Start saying that, I'm doing dishes, I win. I'm on top, I'm full of health. I'm full of, I'm full of, uh, of energy, I'm full you understand? That's how the shield works. See, don't read this like, oh yeah, the shield of flame, blah, blah, blah. You don't even know what you read. Put it in action. Amen? Okay, so here we go. Verse 17. And take, do you understand what he's saying? Taking the shield of faith. And take, and take the helmet. So you, this is something that says out loud, I have to do this. Okay, so now then, uh, a depression has come. Because see, the, the head is covered by the helmet of salvation. You understand that? Salvation is a lifetime experience. All right. So then it te- here he says, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. That's my lifetime experience in the Lord that, I, that, that my head is covered. And, and, okay, yes, okay. So on the helmet of salvation. So what do I do when depression comes? And if anybody's ever, ever had depression, I believe every person on the earth at one time or another has had to deal with depression. It's, it's like a, a heaviness on your head. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes. And, uh, and it's, it's just like it's with you all day. It's with you whatever you do or don't do. It's just there. Okay. So when that comes, you notice I didn't say if. When that comes, then I've got to, according to this book, I've got to take the helmet of salvation. Like a motorcycle rider, he don't sleep in his helmet. He puts it on when he starts riding that bike. Is that right? Okay, so when when the enemy comes to bring depression, I've got to go find my helmet. Where is my helmet at? I've got to get my helmet on. Well, well, okay, now I'm going to get my helmet. Here's my helmet. Thank you, Father, that my mind is renewed every morning according to this book. And I thank you that that word is truth. And I refuse. I refuse to allow my thoughts and my mind to be depressed all day long today. Do you see how that helmet worked? Like the helmet to a motorcycle rider. Are we getting this? Okay. Okay. So now then it said, and the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay. Now, okay, I'm going to say this. Your sword will do you no good as long as it's in the sheath. You know what? This, this Bible can go lay in the, in, in the drawer and you not get it in your heart and in, your, and, and, and in you and it's like leaving a sword in a sheath and you walking right out in the middle of battle and all of your enemies got their sword drawn and here you're standing out there. Well, I've got a sword. Boy, that thing's sharp too. Well, where is it? Okay, so in action, we've got to stay alert. Number one, we've got to stay alert of what our surroundings are by the Spirit. We've got to stay alert and we've got to stay on, on target of what's going on in our, say this out loud, everyday life. Everyday life. 
I'm not talking about up here in the church. Boy, it's easy up in here, isn't it? I'm talking about out there where the battle is. Okay, so now then. Uh, verse 18 is what I want you to see in these three verses. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Now you notice, because a while ago we talked about the difference of the flesh and the spirit man, right? Okay, now then he's telling us to pray, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for myself only. Is that what this says? Oh, look at this. For all saints. And I'm going to tell you this. The more that you find somebody else that needs prayer and they need your help, the less your problems will be. Amen. I'm telling you. That's how it works. Because when you zero in on you, me, myself, and I, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all you can see is your little, your little cubicle. That's right. That's right. But when you get outside of that cubicle and your brother over here is battling depression and your sister over here, uh, uh, they, they, they need a, a bag of groceries uh, and, and then this one down here needs an encouragement. When you get so involved uh, with someone else, your life all of a sudden takes a change for the better. I know this is either amen or oh me today, but you know, I had to eat it, so y'all got to eat it too. You know how I am, you know. Okay, so now the number four is, okay, oh yeah, staying alert. Now here we go, waiting for Christ's return. Go back to Matthew, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. Are we getting this? We got to get it. Got to get it down deep inside of us. Amen. Okay, Matthew 24, and I'm just going to give you uh, 42 through 44. And this is Jesus talking. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. Now there he used that word again to watch. Watch there, and I truly believe this. I believe that probably at least 75% of Christians don't really believe Jesus is coming any minute. Because their life don't, don't exude that. When you really believe that Jesus, any moment, can return. And you know what? I believe it was yesterday. Was it yesterday that we were in the yard? And I said, boy, Jackie, that'll preach. I wonder who's going to hear the trumpet. Because you know trumpet's going to sound. Who's going to hear the trumpet when he returns? All right, verse 42, he said, Watch therefore, see here Jesus telling us again, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Now he's comparing the return of Jesus to, to a house being broken in by a thief. See, my house was broken in when I lived in Little Rock twice, a year apart. I learned something. If your house gets robbed, usually one year later it gets robbed again because the thieves know that you've had everything replaced. That you have insurance. Most people have insurance. They replaced everything, so they're coming back after your new stuff. I didn't know that. Police officer told me that. And I learned it firsthand. But if I had known when the thieves were coming, I wouldn't have gone on that trip. I went on a manager's meeting to, up to, to uh, Tulsa, and I was gone from home. They were watching my house. They knew when I was gone. That was how they robbed my house. But if I had known they were coming, I would have been prepared. Cope 45. I would have been ready because you ain't taking my stuff I work hard for. Huh? But now Jesus, look at this. Jesus is comparing his return like a thief coming in a house. 
He's telling us today, you ain't going to know when it's going to happen. It's just going to happen. That trumpet's going to sound. And when he said he's coming for those that are looking for him, that means the way we are living our life is if we're really looking for him. Amen. You got to get this. Okay, look at verse 44. Jesus said, therefore, therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. And so here we are living our everyday life. Years has passed, months has passed. Jesus still hadn't come. And if you're not careful, you'll get off of your alert. Let me tell you how to know if you're still on your alert. The urgency to get people saved. There must be an urgency if we really truly believe that Jesus is coming any moment and to know those people are not going to heaven. Is that, is that right? Okay. Okay, so the next one. Last one, Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. Verse 28. We're going to start with verse 28. Now I'm going to say this. That we are in an hour. We are in a season of time. When the, the Bible says when you start seeing, when you start seeing these things, look up and know that your redemption draws nigh. You're near, you're near redemption. And there are things that we are seeing in this earth right now that is unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. The things that are the good that is called bad and bad called good. But, but the word says when you see this, you need to know what season of time you're in. He said you can read the stars, you can read the season, but can you not read this time? See, this season. And so it behooves us to stay on God. He's teaching us today. Stay watchful, stay alert, don't, don't get in the slumber. Stay alert and on course and get through the channel. Amen? All right, here we go. Chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock. Over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Can I tell you this today? I truly believe that if there's anything that needs to happen, especially in America, that walls of religion needs to be torn down. The separation of a belief. Can I tell you this, that if we were, if we all owned sheep, because see, he's saying that we've all been made overseers by the Holy Ghost. I didn't make you one, he did. And that he's saying to feed, to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. And if we can tear walls down of, of religion and look at one another, that gentleman that gave his heart to the Lord this morning, he is now a sheep purchased by precious blood. Purchased by precious blood. That we are responsible to make sure he's fed. 
Because, see, if we had, if we were farmers, I, I know this. I'll, I'll use us for an example. When Jackie and I are going to have to be gone, we've got two little dogs, Willie and Waylon. And we got two little dogs that when we know we're going to be gone, we don't leave them there to starve and to do without water and not be able to go walk. But, but we get, you know, we usually will get Philip. They live not too far up the road. And we get Philip to come down and let them out and let them and feed them and water them. That's because we're responsible for them. Now I'm going to take you to a deeper level this morning. You are responsible for them. That they're fed and that they're watered and that they're protected. See, he's given us a responsibility today. I like something that, that Philip said earlier. This little church has a great outreach. But it's one thing to look at one another. Oh, yeah, you're my sister. Yeah, you're my brother. Yeah. But it's another thing to take responsibility of my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I won't bother to see what religion you are. It will be my heart to feed you. And if I'm going to feed you, I'm going to give you the Word of God. Amen. That That's the truth. The Word of God is the truth. And so I'm going to make sure that, that when, when I feel that unction in here, that I, 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 I'm at the bank or wherever I'm at, and, and, and I, I need to say, uh, like one day this week I was in a, in a store, and uh, just as I looked, this woman had, was sitting. I didn't even know she worked there until she got up. But she was sitting back in the shoe department, and I, I noticed that she looked really sick. And I, so I said to her, I said, are you all right? And uh, she said, yeah, I just got really tired for a moment. I just needed to sit down and rest. And so, uh, you know, I didn't say anything else, and I made it up to the, to the uh, checkout stand, and she was actually the one that was going to ring me up. And uh, when I looked at her, I saw weakness on her. I saw sickness on her. And so I said to her, I said, uh, um, have, are, have you been tested for COVID? And she says, well, I actually, I had COVID. Today's my first day back to work. And I, I, I'm just real weak. I, I've just been real weak. And I said, well, I do understand. I had it back in January. I understand it, it, how it affects you. But I just leaned over that counter and I said, I'm a praying woman. And I'm going to pray for you. I just need to know what your first name is. And she told me her name and she was very glad. Do you understand? See, she was glad that I was going to pray for her. See, I could have chimed in with her and said, oh, yeah, boy, I know about that COVID. You'll be laying up on the couch for two weeks and worn out, you know. See, that wouldn't help her. Just like if I owned sheep and my neighbor had sheep and I looked at and his sheep was hungry, am I going to help his sheep? Am I going to help feed his sheep? See, this isn't about you building you a big platform. It's about us taking care of one another. And making sure they're fed and taken care of. Do you understand? And so today, what he's saying to us, the church. See, he gives, he gives these kind of messages to, to those who are grown up in this thing. But today, he's saying to us, okay, I need you to stay alert. I need you to be watchful and stop paying attention to your flesh. See, he's saying, I need you. I, I need you to bring your flesh subject to your spirit. And how to do that, you can't be lazy in this thing. You got to stay on top of it. When your flesh is screaming, I want this, I want this. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Your flesh is screaming to high heaven. I want, I want, I want. 
on. Your spirit is saying, you're not getting it. Shut your mouth and you're coming subject to me and we're going to follow and do the things of God. Yes. To understand, are we getting this? Yes. Woo, hallelujah. Yes, we're getting this. Verse 29 says, for I know this. That after my departing, after, now listen, see, he's telling us something today. He said, after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. Grievous wolves. It didn't just say a pack of wolves, but it said grievous wolves will enter in where? Among you, among you, not sparing the flock. Verse 30. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Verse 31, therefore, what's the next word? Watch. Watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So this was not a one-time message. He's saying that amongst you will be the wolves to devour and to rip. There will be those who will have false doctrines to draw away big crowds. But I'm here to tell you that as much as when that Bible was written, there is a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. And I'm going to say it as long as I'm breathing, that get on purpose with your life. Get on track and stay alert and follow after the things of God and shun the things of the world. And when your flesh is screaming, get it shut down and begin to walk by the Spirit and watch God move mountains for you. Do we get it? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we're watchful. <clears throat> we're, on, we're on purpose. Amen. Amen. Staying on track. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My goodness, how sweet. How sweet. Yes, yes, thank you. Well, praise the Lord. What are we singing? <laughs> no, we're going to sing a little bit this morning. Brian, the Lord just, I, you know, I, I know some things I can't, I'm not free to give you yet. Uh, but um, uh, the Lord's got some great, I uh, got some uh, happiness for you. Yeah, that's the word, happiness for you. Uh, and he sees uh, your struggles and he sees your desires. Two different things going on, struggle, desire, struggle, desire. And uh, he's, uh, he said, uh, don't, 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 let your, uh, don't let your enemy of your soul get you shook over that, that he understands. Um, I remember one time he said something to me years and years ago. He said, um, uh, he said, Barbara, um, I don't agree with, but I understand. And so there are things that we, we uh, wrestle with, you know, that our own, what I call our own dragons in the closet. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, your own personal private battles. And uh, he understands those battles. But he's got something very sweet for you. That's the word, sweet. It's very sweet for you. And, uh, and, and I said, and I, I'm actually, uh, happy, you'll be very happy and uh, content. I hear that word content. And uh, it's very exciting to me because I get to watch it unfold and I get to see this thing happen. So yes, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. What are we singing? Yes, he is an awesome God. Let's sing. Woo. Okay. Come over here, Jessica. Can you sing here? No, yeah, you can look on with Marty's book. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Do we have any prayer requests while preaching? Nope. All right. Everybody's Our good. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God.
Blue. Blue, you feel like singing today, darling? Can you sing? You and Bubba can you come sing? Yeah, help them, Jessalyn. Here, you better give me that. Uh, let's see. Oh, are we going to do uh, this little light of mine? Oh, all right. Look here, here comes a little bit, too. He's going to sing, too. For our blessings. All right. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed, the I'm blessed coming in and going out. And everything I put my hands to, God causes it to prosper. God causes it to prosper. Our, children our children shall marry the right person the first time. At the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open. To receive the mighty word of God. And speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth. That causes mankind to thirst for God. I'm full. Filled up. Running over. With health. Wholeness. Completeness. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. We give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' Amen. Remember, Tuesday night, Bible study with Jackie at 630 here. And I want to say, oh, too. Is that, this, is that this coming Wednesday? No, it's the next Wednesday. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Robert had to go to work at McAllister's. So let's keep holding him up in prayer. Yes. Okay. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. He he said, I've never been drawn into a place like this before. He was just <laughs> passing by and got drawn in, <laughs> got saved. And I believe he got a dose of the Holy I Ghost. I do too. Yeah. Yes. And then got he had to go to up. work at Mac Allister's. So pray for him. <laughs>